Hi everyone, Steve, welcome to another episode of The Audio Files. I have an idea, I mean, we know what's been going on the last couple of weeks. If you've been under a rock, well, we found out that Mobile Fidelity has a digital step in their mastering chain. So today, I just wanna do a little quick video on my idea for a, uh, I guess, an industry standard mastering chain um, that will allow the record companies to uh, show the transparency in their, uh, in their mastering. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you on the other side of the audio files. Wow, what a week this has been. If you're an audiophile enthusiast like myself, Mobile Fidelity finally came clean and let the world know, no one didn't know already that uh, they do use a digital step in their mastering chain. Uh, they copy the original master tape to a DSD file. They master that DSD file through their gain to analog mastering board and then cut it to vinyl from there. So I think going forward, I mean, we all know that if you buy a package of cereal, you buy a can of soup, the ingredients are on those labels. So why can't record labels, the music industry, for vinyl, I mean, I know they did it with CDs back in the 90s, uh, with the spars code, and I know, um, you know, MoFi was saying that the spars code just doesn't work now, and that's fine. We don't need a spars code. I don't need it. I don't need it. You know, to say a. Hey, hey, hey. Let's just show the mastering chain either on the hype sticker or inside the album sleeve itself. But I think it needs to be done. So, for instance, if you're Mobile Fidelity, well, your master chain on the hype sticker, original master tapes copied to a DSD file, mastered, like I said, on the gain to analog board, cut to vinyl. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Then as a consumer, we know that that is the mastering chain. Don't need any, any um, acronyms for it. Don't need the uh, SPARS code. I think it's pretty standard, pretty straightforward. And I don't know why every single label just can't be transparent in that sense and basically do it that way. I think that would make a lot of sense. Uh, another case in point, you got the craft recordings, uh, the Bill Evans here. Uh, you must believe in spring. I mean, it says right here, all analog mastering from original tapes by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio. So we know it's an all analog pressing. And I found this interesting as well. This is the uh, Abbey Rhodes uh, mastering of Roxy Music's Avalon. And right on the hype sticker here, you can see remastered and cut half speed from the original quarter inch tapes at Abbey Road Studios in London. Pretty cool. So we know the source. Original tapes cut from the original tapes. Actually cut from the original tapes according to this hype sticker. So that's good to know. I really think it should be standardized pretty much just on the hype sticker or probably both as well. And just get rid of these hype stickers that say analog, you know, it says on the, on the front hype sticker from the analog tapes or whatever it might say. Let's just get rid of that. Let's actually be transparent, 100% transparent, and make sure that uh, the consumer knows what they're getting. Uh, we don't need to know the secret sauce of the mastering. If it's, you know, if it's a flat transfer, the EQs on it, who cares about that? That's part of the... Uh, like I said, the secret soft sauce of the mastering engineer and the, and the label itself. But again, transparency, we want to know source, how it was mastered, etc. I think it's really simple just to do that. Love to hear your thoughts. Love to see this as an industry-wide wide, uh, thing going forward. I think it makes a lot of sense. Then we don't have to have these debates and these forums about was it mastered with the original tapes? Was it a digital source? Blah, 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 blah. I mean, let's get on now. Let's start enjoying this, enjoying the music and go from there. That's my two cents on it. Um, and I also think, you know, Mobile Fidelity, yeah, I think they have to clean up the customer service uh, department a bit in terms of getting more transparency there and more communication. Um, you do remember about uh, oh, six months ago, one of my viewers got a um, email from customer service and because um, he was asking about the half speed mastering of their albums and it turns out um, I don't think a lot of people knew that until my video uh, aired a few months back that uh, you know since like 2013-14 uh, Mobile Valley doesn't half speed master their albums any longer so yeah um, I think 
in order to build the trust back for mobile fidelity, customer service needs to be fully um, aware and the transparency has to be there. Um, so as a customer, we feel satisfied with the product and we know what we're getting. So that's my two cents. I won't get too much into it. I'm going on holidays. Hope you enjoyed this quick little one. I just wanted to offer one last thing. We know that uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller 40th anniversary is coming out. I mean, MoFi is doing their one step um, in an SACD. And then there's also another 40th anniversary edition um, outside of that that's going to be pressed. Now my sources tell me that Bernie Grunman will not be mastering the, that 40th anniversary pressing, according to my sources. I find that very interesting. So that is the news I have uh, with regards to Michael Jackson's thriller that will be out this fall. So stay tuned for more, if there's more with regards to the mastering of uh, Michael Jackson's thriller. We'll talk to you again.